As promised, I'm back, taking a look at the user mod from Digital Foundry Patreon member Frosty to enable ray tracing in gameplay in Forza Horizon 5 on PC. In this video, I will go over how the ray tracing works in the game, what you can modify with the mod, how to enable the mod, and some light performance tests and discussion about how feasible this might be on Xbox Series X. First though, let's talk about how reflections are done without ray tracing in Forza Horizon. On the car itself here, there are essentially a set of six cameras following the car around at all times, capturing six faces of the game world onto a cube and mapping those faces onto a sphere. This texture showing off the various sides of the game world around the car maps to the entire car surface. So if you look at the reflection on the car itself, you can see the game world reflected into it. It's pixelated and simple, of course, but it gets the job done more often than not. Now, this is a real-time cube map, as it's called, and it will only reflect the game world, not the car itself. Ray tracing in Forza Horizon 5, as enabled through this mod, takes the ray trace reflection system you can see in the game's garage or Forza Vista and applies it to the gameplay. In the garages, the only object in the ray tracing structure itself is the car body. Every other reflection outside of the car itself is done through that same cube mapping system I just described. I can demonstrate this here with this image on the hood of this car with the ray tracing mod and without it. Without ray tracing, if we look at the headlights here, we can see exactly what I'm talking about regarding how the reflections work in this game. Here we can see a real-time capture of the game world showing the buildings and the area behind the car. The image looks realistic enough, but if you think about it, it makes no sense. How can these headlights on the front of the car have reflections? of the building from the area behind the car. You can also see how that building is not perspective correct. The reflection of the building on the closest headlight has the same perspective as the headlight in the back. The building is being seen from the same angle in the reflection for both headlights. This is due to how cube maps work. Okay, now let us turn on that RT mod. The first thing that I think jumps out are all this tiny self-reflections. That nozzle looking thing here on the front of the car, that's reflected now in the hood of the car. The headlights are as well now reflected on that hood too. And if you look in the headlights themselves, you can see the reflection of the car from different angles in each headlight. The closest headlight is reflecting the right-hand side of the car and the furthest headlight is reflecting the left-hand side of the car. The last thing to notice is that the reflection of the rest of the world is the exact same between the non-RT and RT images. The cloud and the building reflections in the headlamps, for example, are the same between them. That is because those background reflections are still being done by the real-time cube map. It is just that the car is now reflecting itself via ray tracing. Let's take a look at another image that shows off this difference as well. Here, this is me driving around in a chrome-plated car for demonstration purposes. Now with Art RT, we can see the world around the car being reflected in a rather nice way. It's not perspective correct, but it's a good enough facsimile. But if you notice, the car is not reflecting itself. So this leads to some odd looking areas like underneath the side mirror here or how the intake area here is reflecting the road through the body of the car. Adding in ray tracing and we can see the intake area which is closed off to light is now reflecting only the internal area of that intake. And the side mirror, well that's now being reflected properly on the side of the car. So the main takeaway from this ray tracing mod is that it will enhance the realism of the shading on the player car itself. As the materials in the game look good with the reflections just from the world, as it is by default, but with reflections of the car itself in the materials, well, those materials look a lot better. Before, materials could glow a bit on certain areas. Or it would make parts of the car look like they're floating on it. Ray traced reflections ground these aspects of the car to itself and fix it. For sure, having the ray traced reflections include more than just the car would increase the realism of this game even further, but it's quite interesting to see how these two techniques mix together to trick the mind. I think it's rather cleverly done. The ray traced reflections here in Forza Horizon 5 are also unique in how they represent multiple bounces of reflections. The best way to show this off is in this shot here. Take a look at the side mirror on this car in the reflection on the window. As I move the camera here, notice how the reflection in that reflection on the side view mirror is also moving. So in the reflection of the side view mirror, you can see what that mirror is also reflecting. A reflection in a reflection. This is performance intensive as it means the shading of the reflections is complex. A lot of other games, like Marvel Spider-Man for example, purposely reduce the shading in the reflected world 
to keep performance up. So how are they doing it in Forza? The mirror in the reflection here is getting its second bounce of reflection and shading from the real-time cube map I described earlier. Normally you could do this with pure ray tracing as well too, but that would require a second ray from the reflection point, which is also very expensive. Technically this can kind of be done in Forza Horizon 5 with the mod, but to a limited degree that I will talk about later. So there's a cool upgrade here, but it has its limitations beyond what I've just already mentioned. The first limitation is that you're only going to be seeing this on your car, not on other cars going around you, and it's only going to be from the normal perspective of the game on the back of your car in an obvious way, since that's the way you're driving. On some cars, the self-reflections will be more obvious than on other cars. The second limitation is that it does not work on the inside views of cars. So like here, look at the rear view mirror. With RT reflections, we would expect that we would not only see the outside world in the reflection in the mirror, but we would also see parts of the inside of the car as well. The last limitation is that RT reflections definitely reflect a lot of the car detail, but you can see something important is missing, your player character. Here is the game without RT reflections. We add in RT reflections and, well, the car materials look a lot, lot better. But don't you notice that something is missing? Yeah, the player character and the passenger here are not reflected in the hood. So there are limitations here, but on average, you definitely see an increase in realism to car materials overall by using this ray tracing mod. Here is where I will get into how to install the mod, and I will describe ways to tweak it for better performance or increased visual realism. First, you want to have the game opened up, like I am here in the game world. Here I'm using windowed mode for demonstration purposes, but you can of course be full screen and then just alt tabbing. Simply open up Cheat Engine and add the Horizon EXE as shown. Then add the Cheat Engine table for your version of the game, and I'll provide a link in the description to PC Gaming Wiki where you can find downloads for these Cheat Engine tables. By default, this Cheat Engine table turns on RT, so that's really all you have to do. If you want to make sure RT stays on at all times, you can click the Active field, which makes it turn back on should it ever be turned off by the game. If you look in game, there is now RT affecting the car in an obvious way. So that is how you turn it on. Now you may be wondering, what are the reasons you may want to tweak any of the other options? The ray per pixel or reflection resolution setting can be tweaked at a performance cost to increase or decrease reflection quality. As seen on the far left, it goes all the way down to 1 8 resolution, then 1 quarter resolution, what appears to be native resolution as default, and then a greater than 1 ray per pixel that essentially anti-aliases the ray traced reflections, which are a bit raw in their default form. I don't see any reason to actually reduce fidelity beyond the default, as I don't like the look of the way the low res reflections are, but increasing the res above can cost 15% as you see here in a scene like this, with its biggest advantage being a decreased amount of aliasing, which you can see in motion in these two shots here where the super res reflections look pristine and lack that sparkle effect and sawtooth edges that you can see in the default ones. There are two reasons to tweak the number of bounces above the default. The first reason is that you are in photo mode grabbing a screenshot of something like the interior of a wheel. Here you can see how increasing the bounce value from 0 to 1, which makes it actually two bounces of reflections, while that fixes the shading of the spokes in the reflection on the wheel to be more realistically darkened, instead of falling back to the real-time cube map for their shading only. Another reason why you would want to adjust the number of bounces above the default is because in some caves or tunnels there can be some issues with the reflections due to how the secondary bounce is shaded. If you look at this car, you can see what I mean. Turning on RT here gives the car nice self-reflections, but it can cause a shading mismatch. Look at the edges of the car, or specifically the intake area near the car door. It is self-reflecting now with RT on, but since the Q map is being used to shade the self-reflections internally, there's some unwanted glowing happening. If you turn on the second bounce, that goes away completely. Altogether, the second bounce can cost around 7% performance when just being right behind your car. So now you're probably wondering, how much does the RT in general actually cost? Now the true answer will depend heavily on your resolution, how close you are to the car, which GPU you are using, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to representatively choose the RTX 3080 and RX 6800 XT and use the benchmark to show you. Now the benchmark sequence generally runs better better on NVIDIA than AMD, even though other areas of the game will run better on the Radeon. But one thing that is able to be seen here is that the cost of ray tracing while turned on is much heavier on the AMD side than the NVIDIA side. 
The Nvidia GPU is still keeping above 60 in the benchmark with RT on. The AMD card, definitely not so. Altogether throughout the benchmark, turning on ray tracing adds 1.7 milliseconds to the render time on the Nvidia RTX 3080. On the AMD card, turning it on adds about 2.9 milliseconds of rendering time, so quite a bit more proportionally in comparison. So this RT is going to be easier to run if you're using an Nvidia card. Coming to the end here, I'm a bit surprised how this ray tracing is not enabled in the menu as an option or an experimental option on PC. It seems to work very well. I only experienced one issue really with the reflections and that is on this car right here where the reflections add these square patches on the back window of the car and that was about it. It would have been a nice addition to the PC version and I wish it was there at launch, but maybe it'll be added in the future officially. Will it also come maybe to Xbox when they do that? Based upon the performance cost I've seen here on AMD, I'm not surprised that it is at the moment limited to the garage on Series X. It costs just around 3 milliseconds on a big RX 6800 XT at 4K, and it would be surely quite a bit more on the Series X GPU. So I imagine if they do end up enabling it in gameplay on Series X, it may come at the cost of resolution, perhaps using dynamic resolution. But that is really all I can say. Try this mod out if you can on PC. If you did like this video and found it informative, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, join DF on Patreon to get years worth of our content in high quality for download, and join our Discord where this mod originates from. If you want to talk to me about this video, write a comment below, or follow me and DF on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell and auf Wiedersehen!